Welcome garden friends. This is Gail and I'm your palm plant girl. Hey, today we're going to be talking about humps. Well, first of all, the Feed the Hungry Garden project has been going really well and I've learned quite a bit along the way. Uh, for those of you who are new, it started out as a big empty lot behind their main uh, office building and uh, we have turned that into a vegetable garden to feed the hungry. We've had lots of volunteers but there's still a lot more to do. And here are some pictures that I'll show you of some of the things that, we've, that have been going on. Well, no garden is complete without your scarecrow. And this is the Feed the Hungry Garden Scarecrow. His name is Jan. Jan's doing a great job. The Key Club put him together uh, from our local area high school. And some uh, youth group kids came and stuffed him and stuck him up. And Jan overlooks the pumpkin patch. Here is one of the little pumpkin sproutlings that Jan is in charge of. It's so exciting to watch the sprouts coming out of the ground and these grew pretty fast. They came up in about two weeks. This, is, this one comes complete with a ladybug. Just recently we had a large donation of lettuce plugs and radishes and uh, lots of varieties of tomato too. So that was really exciting and so I'll keep you updated on that. And Here's a picture of some of it after I had planted it. Uh, with one of my youth volunteers. As part of the fundraising, I am growing artichokes from my home. These are green globe artichokes. Of course, they look a lot better than this picture here and uh, looks kind of cruddy. Looks good in real life. Anyway, here's a better picture for you. And these are about 8 to 10 inches tall. I sell them online and I sell them on eBay too. The Feed the Hungry Garden project has been going great. We've had tons of volunteers and supplies donated and plants and so from the heart I am so very very thankful. And I've learned a lot along the way because as you all know I'm a water gardener and not necessarily a dirt farmer. And so some of the things that I have learned and I read up on something in on the internet. You know if it's on the internet it's, it's got to be true. And that was how to grow little tiny tiny seeds. Um, like lettuce seeds are really tiny. And some other seeds are, are very, very microscopic. I'm like, well, what's the best way to, to grow that? And so I read about starting your seeds in a baggie with a coffee filter. I guess that works for some people, but it didn't work for me. Because the roots got stuck to the coffee filter, and then when I tried to transfer it over to a regular container with soil, I broke the plants and they died. So back to plan A, what works for me is just taking a little a toothpick, sticking it on the um, container with the soil, spraying it with a, just a regular, uh, misting it with a regular water bottle, and then covering it with saran wrap plastic uh, just to keep the humidity in there. And that works, but you have to remember to water it. I haven't been very good at that lately. So, that's that little tidbit in, of information. Now to the humps. Doo, doo, doo. Uh, something that I learned while I was at the Hungry Garden was that you don't necessarily need to make those farmer's humps, you know. You know how you, you go by fields and you see the humps in, 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 uh, in rows uh, for, for the crops? Okay, so we made that um, not thinking that our soil was the best to really hold up. There wasn't a lot of the uh, kind of the clay-like loam in the soil. It was just whatever could be donated was uh, compost mixed in. And so we're watering with the hose and then the humps just flattened out. So subsequently my little lettuce seeds that were on the humps got washed down into the valleys and, and now I've got bare humps and valleys with lettuce growing. But that's okay. I had to show you something really crazy I saw. Check out this house. This is in Visalia, California on Center Street. And 
the cactus is so thick and so big you can barely see the house. Here's another view. And this is how you get into the house. I would not want to be a burglar here. Uh, it is so, so huge. I can't believe it. It's like a fortress. A lot of you out there have been asking me about how to grow your artichokes that you purchased from me. And thank you so very much because the sales of my artichoke plants go to help support the cost of the Feed the Hungry Garden project. And it's fairly simple, uh, but for your reference, please go to my website at www.pondplantgirl.com and find the artichoke link and that will tell you all about it. But uh, in short, when you receive your plant, it might need to be soaked in a bucket, just the roots, for a couple days um, for it to acclimate. And, but if it looks like real perky and everything like that, then you should have no problem planting it in the ground. And make sure you, you plant it in a, in a nice hole with uh, a good soil like miracle Grow soil. Now, I don't want to re recommend the organic miracle Grow, Grow soil. I saw that and it was full of wood chips and it was actually looked pretty cruddy. Uh, but I do recommend the miracle Grow moisture control soil and that's what I grow my artichokes in. Artichokes also love tons of mulch. A very, very good mulch is actually water hyacinth. So if you purchase water hyacinth from my website or on eBay, uh, when you have extra plants, just throw below your artichoke plant. The, the uh, water hyacinth will soak up all the great nutrients and gunk from the fish and uh, whatever dies inside your pond, and, you know, plants and stuff like that, worms, snails, and um, it retains it in the, in the plant's roots. And so when you throw it uh, underneath your artichoke plant uh, for mulching, it just uh, the, your plant will feed on that and will love it. Artichokes also love a steer manure, and so you can uh, purchase some cured st steer manure uh, from any hardware store. And uh, I like to go to, to Lowe's. They have a really good quality steer manure there. Here is some water hyacinth that I randomly picked out. At the top is the, the regular water hyacinth and at the bottom is the rosette. Now as you can see there is a slight difference in size but they will both get much larger as the season goes along. You can see the difference in color as well. Now there is some yellowing in both plants and that's to be expected when they're coming right out of the winter season. And as you can see, we've got some babies shooting off from the rosette water hyacinth, so that's really encouraging. It, it seems as if the rosette also handles the winter months a lot better. Here is what the regular water hyacinth looks like in a container. And here is what the rosette looks like in a container. And as I said, there is a little bit of yellowing after the winter seasons but this will all clean up and look really really pretty and then pretty soon as the months warm up we'll have pretty purple flowers in both the regular and the rosette plants. I'd like to say hello to my new garden friend Joy from Mississippi. Hi Joy! Joy joined up and she subscribed to my YouTube videos and also to my MySpace so I'm glad to have you on and she's a very very lovely lady. Thank you Joy. Well, this is Gail Gates. I'm your palm plant girl. Hey, keep on being you, and uh, let's get your garden looking green. I'll see you next time. I'm mean. I'm mean. I'm so mean. Uh -oh. Did you hear that frog? I'm just going mad.